Welcome to What to Say and How to Say It. Today, we're going to be talking about the one-sided relationship, where one person seems to be all in, working on the relationship, and the other one, oh, not so much. That's a problem. Well, there's a lot of people in those. And so we want to, we're going to connect with you today and tell you, hey, there's hope. Here's what some well, here's some things that you should be looking at and take into consideration. I'm with our favorite licensed professional counselor, Kyle Hargrove, and today we're going to dig into this topic. Uh, and and I liked what you said at the early as we started talking about this. If your person isn't playing, well, you better find some people who will. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> You're not suggesting an affair. I know that. <laughs> no, I'm not. That yeah. is a, yes. Yeah, yeah. First disclaimer of yeah. the day. <laughs> so, no, uh, actually, what we're talking about there is, um, I, I don't know if you've ever had this said to you, it's not its not a pleasant thing to have said to you or asked of you, um, are, are you, are you getting cold? Am I getting cold? Yeah, because it must be cold standing up there at the top all by yourself. Oh, yeah, no, no one's <laughs> ever said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> if if that's a question that has been asked of you, it might mean that you're doing something right. Oh. Uh, it, it, you know, it might mean that that you're in the process of holding your person accountable for doing the work on this relationship. And and let's face it, they all require that we do the work. Mm -hmm. You know, yet have we seen the perfect relationship or the marriage that never required any anything out of the ordinary or extra or on purpose? Yeah. And, you know, we focus a lot on the content of uh, or the context of being intentional. Yep. And when we haven't been, then it seems like the issues begin to stack up. And then when they're stacked for a while, they don't add up, they multiply and they don't multiply in simple multiplication, they multiply exponentially. And somebody has to have the wherewithal, the guts to say, stop. Mm -hmm. This is going to require some work. And, and unfortunately, all too often, we find that in a couple, only one person chooses to be aware of the issues that are at hand, the levity of those issues, and is interested in making an effort to make things better. Well, that that's work. I mean, it's so much easier to blame your partner for the problem, right? I mean, and we and people really believe that it is the other person's fault. They and and I have not seen that. I have seen in most situations both people have something to own in what's happening most situations well okay all <laughs> yeah all yeah even <laughs> even if you know it's only your two percent of, a, of a, yeah. a thing well maybe it's two percent this time but i guarantee you there's other places where it's over 50 right mm -hmm. we need to take ownership take our responsibility and show up differently yeah um, if, and if we have two people that are committed to the relationship and we'll do what it takes to get the work done really the only way to look at the you know the blame game is that look we're both a hundred percent responsible yep i love that we're both a hundred percent responsible and we need to be ready to give 115. Mm -hmm. i and like to come who, tell come oh i'm sorry go ahead <laughs> no, the people who do that uh usually get it done well and the, it's taking that kind of responsibility it's leveling up to that I like to tell people you're both right and you're both wrong. You know, that, <laughs> so what do you want to do with this? Like there, there just has to be a different way of navigating it. But yeah. let's, let's say we're talking today to the, the person whose spouse thinks that they're the one to blame, not, not themselves, but the, the, you know, the person we're talking to that they're, they're, they don't need, the spouse doesn't need to do anything because, you know, it's the other person who has the problem. And they do have a problem. The marriage isn't healthy. They're willing to say something about it and they want to do something different. Those are the people we want to talk to today. Not the person who's like, my, my spouse thinks we have a problem and everything's fine. Yeah, that's not you. Turn us off. 
It, <laughs> we're talking to the ones that are like, yeah, there's a problem. And, and I want to know, what do I do when I'm the lone ranger in this thing trying to fix it? And I, I don't have Tonto. Like my partner's not my partner here. So what do you, what advice do you have for us today, Kyle? Well, probably the opposite, <clears throat> excuse me, probably the opposite of what people would first begin to think of. Because when we see that there are problems and that there are situations and dynamics in that relationship that are adversarial, the first thing people probably think of is we're going to pick up our weapons and go to war. Hmm. You know, we're going to hash this out, so to speak. And although there are things that need to be hashed out only in an appropriate confrontation, right? we're usually not at that point <laughs> when we begin the process, when right. we say, okay, this, this thing needs work. Mm -hmm. So I, I think the first, the first thing uh, for an individual to do is to begin with setting some pretty significant boundaries and the first one i'm going to think of is i'm not going to take all the blame for this mm. you're not going to stand there and say well we wouldn't be here in this situation mm -hmm. if it weren't because of you right if it weren't because you do this and don't do that and you know the list can get big really quick well those are conversations worth leaving Hey, I love you, but that's when you, when we can talk without a, um, you language, you know, you can talk about how you're feeling. I want to hear that. I don't want to hear you blame me for the 27 things I've done wrong for the 48 years we've been married. And there you have a boundary. Yeah, exactly. And, and early in, right? Like it yes. boggles my mind how many people think that long suffering is sitting there and letting the person who loves them most in the world and they love most in the world spew hate and vile vitriol all over them for hours on end, like two, three hours. They'll, no. How about two sentences? And if you can't redirect, take a break. There you go. Yeah, that's it right there. You almost have to think that someone who's willing to sit there for that amount of time believes that they deserve it. Well, and that is the thing, too right yeah yeah you know I, i've got to let him or her do this for this hours and hours on end uh because it wouldn't be this way if i didn't deserve it mm -hmm. it may be a shorter conversation if i were a better spouse well and and underneath that is well you know they feel this way and so feelings aren't wrong and so but what you're hearing oftentimes isn't something some feelings feelings look like i feel frustrated I am sad. I feel sad. I feel annoyed. I, you know, feelings are not, you never do this. You always, you are then 15 years ago. What if I start it with, I feel like you never do this? Oh yeah. That's no, <laughs> that's not even close and, either. <laughs> go back to my corner. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I feel like you think I'm like, no, those are not feelings. Feelings are I feel, and then you pick an emotion that actually if you, ever, if you have a reasonable command of the English language and grammar, you can actually put the word feel or think in the sentence, and it'll tell you whether it's a feeling or a thought. Okay, you got to explain that because there's I feel people sad. that don't understand this. I yeah. feel sad. That's an emotion. Okay. Right. I think sad doesn't make sense at all. Oh, good test. Okay. Uh -huh. It's not a hundred percent, but it's generally correct. I feel angry. I think angry. No. Well, I think I'm angry. No, that's not what we said. You don't put any extra words in there at all. Mm -hmm. Just put that word in there to the, I feel, or I think test. Yeah. And it's not and complaint it's either. Like, no, yeah. I feel is identify this thing that's ha and that's going to take a second or 10 minutes or an hour or five yeah. months. Like people are good at that. Yeah. And that sentence starter, I feel, needs to be followed with an emotion mm -hmm. or something darn close to it. Yep. And we yep. should hang out for those those questions or those emotions. We should hang out to hear how our partner is feeling. That Absolutely. matters. Absolutely. And that's kind of the question about this entire conversation. You know, what, what happens? Uh, how do you create a space 
with healthy boundaries and with healthy and realistic expectations and with minimal criticism and that one that includes open honest communication with two people or, or open and honest communication period mm -hmm. if you're the only one that's doing that if yeah. your partner doesn't come to play when it comes to saying this needs work and we need to sit down and begin the process right now you know how, how do you create that space when just one out of two wants to do it or sees the need? I imagine 99% of the time, both of them see the need. Right. But one is not always willing to participate. Mm -hmm. And sometimes both say they're willing to participate, but then they they move on to to seeing what they can dig up from the past or what they can you know grab onto that's happening right now and use those as weapons, you know to beat the daylights out of each other mm -hmm. and then step back and say, well, how are we doing now? Right. Well, and that's, <laughs> that's one of our, yeah, no kidding. Cause that, that ruins everything that makes it worse. We have boundaries in our marriage intensive that we teach people on the, and the first one is, um, you know, that have no conversation when I'm emotional. So I got a boundary for my own mouth first. Right. And then the second one is I'm going to protect the relationship. So when anybody's emotional, and we learn what the blaming and the you language stuff is, right? So we we don't allow that. We do allow feelings. Like you can be angry and say, hey, I'm really angry. You start turning that anger on your partner, like that's out of bounds, right? Yeah. So so you get those. But the other pieces of, of this that, that come into play are dealing with the now. You know, one topic happened yesterday or this morning, it's recent. And, and you stay in that. You don't get to be historical. You didn't deal with that stuff. Well, that, guess what? That then needs to be worked out differently because you don't have the skill set to talk to your partner in a way that is really healthy about old wounds. That's a thing. Most people don't have that skill set. Yeah. I mean, you can get there, but you got to stay present. That's another one. Those are the three enemies of that situation is being historical, being hysterical, and being histrionic. Oh, talk about histrionic. I don't know what that one is. Histrionic? Oh, it's all the dramas. That's it's different than dramas. hysterical? Like, oh, I don't understand. Absolutely. Uh, all the, you know, histrionics are beyond hysterical. Oh. You know, histrionics are, you know, you watch the histrionics, watch a little kid throw, turn the histrionics on in the grocery store when they don't get what they want. Oh, and, okay. and just absolutely bellowing, mm, mm -hmm. you know, and everybody in the store turns, you know, you know, someone's beating their child. We've got to intervene. No, <laughs> that's not what happened. You know, yeah. child wanted a piece of gum and he didn't get it. Yeah. And someone has taught him that doing this will ultimately get you that piece of gum or they wouldn't do it more than just a few times. probably. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, so those are histrionics. Those are, I'm going to go above and beyond the drama and the emotion so that I can gain control of something that I feel like is, is uh, not in my control right now. So do people generally do that yeah. as a coping mechanism? Yeah, I would, you know, if I assume the best about people that they're not using this to manipulate others on purpose. Like I could see a two-year-old kind of like being taught that Pavlovian style because the parent gave them candy to shut them up. Like I get that. But as we grow into being an adult, do do people actually intellectualize that and be like, okay, I'm going to amp it up because no. Okay. So I think so. I think it's the same thing. It's just at a different level. Hmm. You know, the, don't, don't leave it up to two-year-olds and four-year-olds to throw temper tantrums. Okay. There are, 22 and 44 year olds who can throw just as great and awesome and entertaining temper tantrum. You just do it different ways. Yeah. You know, we don't lay down on the ground anymore and beat the ground and smash our head against the ground. Cause we didn't get the cookie. How about holding your breath till you turn blue and pass out? That's a yeah, good one. That usually by the time you're <laughs> in your forties, you usually <laughs> have on that one. So. Oh, okay. We have grow it in our forties. Good, good. Well, I have a question for you. Yeah. The person that finds themselves in this situation, look, I'm trying to be realistic about what's really going on, what's really there. And I, you know, and maybe I have a couple of handfuls of issues that I know are present and mm -hmm. I want to work through them, but my spouse just isn't interested. Mm -hmm. What does it take for a person in that situation? What are the things that you can think of that 
that it takes on their behalf, you know, to even begin that process, much less to work it through. Yeah. Whew. So that glad you pointed out those are two different things. I have a bunch of clients, both men and women, that are in this situation where they're the ones trying to work on the relationship. And it's the other spouse with, you know, the whatever it is, right? Yeah. And insert your whatever. So the I, I always tell people, make sure you got your basics covered. Like, are you getting enough sleep? Are you eating properly? Are you exercising? Like how are you doing in the self-care department? Are you spending time with the Lord? Because if we're not taking care of ourselves, we're going to turn to somebody else to take care of us. Like that's just how that works. And we're going to turn to the wrong person. We're going to turn to the person we want that from. And in a healthy situation, we could actually get that emotional, physical, relational, sexual, whatever support from, right? but they're not going to be there and then we're going to be worse off than when we started so we have to be healthy ourselves physically emotionally relationally spending time with friends doing things that we're wired to do we call that the basics like you're a human god created with certain things about you you need water you need food you need exercise go do them and do the thing that causes you joy as often as you can that doesn't infringe like i ride horses because it builds my soul in a way that nothing else does um yeah and if I, i'm a different person when i'm not doing that so i try to go a couple times a week i i'd have to be careful with that because i could go every day all day you know that would not be responsible <laughs> so yeah. but stoking our own fire making sure that we're in a healthy place is is definitely the first thing that and and people don't do that they don't take care of themselves yeah. so you know my soul gets start. restored on the first tea box and usually by the 13th tea box i've lost it again so that's oh <laughs> <laughs> so, so your answer There's is hope to... reigns eternal every time i start a round of golf you know uh -huh. this is good for my soul and by the 13th tee, it's like why am i here well this maybe you should only pay me. play like nine i know but that's <laughs> what the old guys do and i just can't go there yet okay I yeah I well think oh go ahead i was gonna say at least it, you make it at 12 and it's still all good like maybe you should quit then i don't oh, know how it, golf works it's, so. a, it's not a it's not an immediate thing it's it it you know it starts earlier than that but oh okay okay so, <laughs> yeah, I, started that, I, I started that and i'm shutting you up so there we go <laughs> okay <laughs> all right <laughs> not shutting you up shutting you down okay all right um the the interesting thing to me, and I had just had a, a thought that popped into my mind from a training that I did years and years ago in the corporate training world. And um, I was reminded of um, a lion or a lioness in Africa, let's say. And they're skulking across the landscape hiding behind what they can waiting for that herd of hyenas or water buffalo or whatever it is to cross through so that they can find themselves a meal for them in their in their pack and it, it's brought up that there's one thing that usually almost every time happens the last thing that happens before the lion springs on its chosen animal. And it's not saying the blessing. Do you know what it is? No idea. They salivate. They drool. They're so focused on what they're about to do that they forget to swallow. And all the moisture in their mouth just comes out. I see that picture when I think of what it requires for the person who's attempting to do this solo. You know, they're still in the relationship. They're still married. They still love the person. They still want it to work, but they're the only one who is looking at the scenario realistically. Mm. And it is, it's not so difficult to see what needs to be done and understand the work that it's going to require but it is difficult to begin it and to continue doing it when you're not getting what you need in return from your spouse. Mm -hmm. And so I see this as that scenario where that you got to be so laser focused on your goals 
so committed to the relationship and what's going on. You know, and I think you used the word earlier, either in this conversation or, or a previous one about tenacity. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to be so tenacious in terms of doing what you have to do and sticking with it and being consistent and not picking and choosing, well, I feel like it today and I don't feel like it tomorrow. And then the next day it's like, yeah, I really wish I had stuck with it yesterday, but I'll start back today. You know, you can't do that. <laughs> no. Yeah. That you, you hit the nail on the head with that. And, um, you know, when people first start this work, yeah. it's hard to figure that out because their identity is so wrapped up in the other person and the absence of empathy and affection and understanding and love and whatever right and and that is true whether it, this is caused by an individual's own unhealthy wounding and lack of healing in themselves or whether they actually have a spouse who is negligent like for real you can have those things going on at the same time and not know the difference but when it comes down to you know the the simple things like if if you're it, a litmus test for a good relationship is, hey, if if something good happens to me or you know one of us, is the other person happy? Are they joyful for you? Like that's that's a telling sign right there. If you get some kind of negative something back, it's like, whoa, wait a minute. Okay. And I like how Jordan Peterson talks about this. He says, stop. If you don't get support, if you don't get friendship, you don't, you don't engage with people that aren't acting trustworthy. And, and so when you talk about tenacity, it's like, yeah, you need a lot of other friends. You need, a, and you, no, don't go have an affair, <laughs> but, but fill yourself up. And, and that first, second skill that we teach people, third skill, you know, about being present, mm -hmm. not get, you have to be able to be present to be tenacious. Because if you think of your history every single day, you get lonely. Yes. And that's a trap uh, that the enemy wants you in. He wants you to be thinking. And, and it's easy. I mean, I, I see this happen to people all the time. They they see a couple down the street or, you know, in a restaurant and something sweet happens for them. And then they, oh, they compare. And oh, I don't have. And then, okay. So in the 30 years of, okay, now I'm miserable. Thanks. You know. <laughs> Good job. Well, we know that comparison is the thief of joy. Yes. And so anytime that we're engaged in that, we're not engaged in, in what we set ourselves up to do. We've, mm -hmm. we've deviated somewhere and, and somehow. My husband says to compare is to despair. And he is a hundred percent right on that. Yeah. It is you know, one breath away, one thought from comparison to misery. So, you know, to your point, being tenacious requires staying wildly present in the now that you're in, because here's this person and maybe they're not doing all these other things that someone else is. Well, stop looking at that. They're here. They're alive. They're whatever they are. And they brought you, brought you a cup of coffee this morning or whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Like you've got to, you got to look for the good. I believe there's good in everybody. You got to look for that. Yeah. Well, and, you know, kind of a, of a parting shot here. One of the things that that I just want to encourage people about is if you find yourself in this situation, it doesn't take long at all, you know, doing, trying to do the work of two people and trying to be consistent with it and trying to stay upbeat about it or for you to recognize the loneliness that's probably already present, but it just seems to be magnified. And I really want to encourage people to utilize the support system that God has given you mm -hmm. talk about thanking God for our friends and thanking God for people who have played this role and that role in our lives. I'm not, I'm not promising that it's going to be comfortable for you or for them, but to not be able to, to vent a bit, to not be able to express, this is what I'm dealing with and what I'm going through and know that there's somebody in your corner who's praying for you. Mm -hmm who if they don't hear from you, you're going to hear from them because they want to know about your day. They want to know how you did. You know, maybe they know you're going to have uh, an attempted appropriate and respectful confrontation with your spouse that night. You know, they're going to be sitting on the edge of their seat wondering how it's going while they're praying for you. Yeah. And if you can't, if you don't have that, do what you can to find 
a therapist, mm -hmm. uh, a pastor, uh, they're really good with resources most of the time. Yeah. And if they're not qualified, you know, to walk with you through certain things, they usually know people that are. Yep. You know, and not all pastors are great counselors. That's, you know, that's a fact. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's a different set of gifting. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. And honestly, Kyle, in this space, um, when, when people cannot create the relationships, the friendships, therapy is the right answer. Um, I, I've had a couple of clients, coaching clients that just, they've looked at me as they answer that. And I'm like, I love you. I am not your friend. And, and so one of your assignments is go get three people, figure it out, start dating the girls in your neighborhood. Like for real, this is said to a woman, by the way, and dating meant, you know, find a friend. <laughs> you know? Thank you. It's funny. <laughs> yeah, that was, that came out kind of funny. Just clarifying. Um, yeah. But you got to have one to three people. Even Jesus did that. We're wired for those relationships. And yeah, if you're not able to do that, dig into why that is, because there's something in us that's broken that needs therapy. Now, I don't think that's always it. If you can't go do something, sometimes that's a coaching answer, but something like this that's preventing you from sharing yourself and being a friend with someone, that needs a therapeutic answer that um, sometimes goes past what we could do in coaching. Yeah. And I, I really believe that God is at the center of this too. You know, a good question to look at is, okay, am I, am I spending any time with the Lord? Like, <laughs> and I'm expecting myself to be able to do this by myself. Yeah, no, Jesus in you can do this. We can't, humans can't handle this kind of stuff. So we exactly. need support. We need Jesus. Absolutely. So what would you leave our uh, listeners with in terms of a pearl of wisdom around this today best piece of advice i actually have two okay cool i have two pieces number one don't despair just don't despair and I, that's a that's a short word with a big implications mm -hmm. and and uh i know it feels like it's you know you want to give up and that when you're doing something alone that you know you're trying to lift the load that's a heavy load to begin with. And not only that, it's a heavy load for two people and it was never intended to be carried or dragged. By mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Please reach out. Don't despair. Don't go through this completely alone. Good. And the other is if you find yourself drooling, you're on the right track. Oh my God. That's a little weird. Can you unpack that just a little bit and make the analogy? Well, you had to have been here seven minutes ago. Well, I was, but I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm like, okay, I just I mean, have the lunch. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So stay focused. focused. No focus that you forgot to swallow. That's yeah. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got to focus, I think, on on what God has for you. You know, the hope that it is in the Lord instead of hope in a person or hope in a relationship or hope in a child or hope in whatever. Yeah. All of that's just, he's eternal. Yes. Yeah. So staying focused on those things. Yeah. That was funny. I just have a drooling lion in my head though. I'm sorry. Yeah. You'll, you'll never run see it. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for popping by today. Okay. Great to have you again. And um, everyone, if you're interested in more resources around this, pop over to our website, greaterimpact.org. Grab our little PDF on Stop Walking on Eggshells. And be sure to listen to the next episode where you'll learn more about how to deal with conflict and difficult relationships. Thanks for, thanks for being here. God bless. Mm -hmm.